everyone, my name is A. Max with the Facts. You are now watching the AWF series, and of course, we make the unknown known. That's right. And right now, I'm here at Taipei, Taiwan. And the name of the restaurant I'm here right now dining with a special man. The name of the place is Eddie's Cantina. All right. Eddie, how are you? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me. Before we start the interview, there's one question I want to ask you first. Yes. Is your favorite cartoon Ed, Ed and Eddie? I actually had have had been asked that before, and it's uh, I've been in Taiwan for 16 years. I didn't even know that existed, to be honest. So, yeah, no, I, I I've never seen it. But actually, sometimes when I'm looking for videos of my restaurant, when I'm googling them, that stuff pops up, and I'm like, what is that? And I'll actually check it out. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> So, uh, Eddie, may you just tell uh, the viewers here and also your future customers who you are and what you're all about? So basically, uh, my name is uh, Edgar Gonzalez. I was born in Canada. My parents uh, originally come from Mexico. That's why it's a Mexican restaurant. And people say, why is a Canadian opening a Mexican restaurant? That's why. Uh, when I was raised in Canada, everything at our house was Mexican. Uh, when I think of Mexican culture, I think of uh, food, football, and uh, family. So for me, that's Mexican culture. Uh, that's what I grew up with, and that's what I'm all about. I love family, I love good food, and I love football, soccer. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. And uh, did you, like, were you excited in the World Cup? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I love the, sorry, I cut you off. I love the World Cup. So um, this World Cup was good. There was lots of goals, lots of fun. Um, Always mixed emotions with Mexico because Mexico always does well in the first round and then they always lose the first game in the round of 16. And I always get people like, oh my god, Mexico is doing awesome this time. I'm like, just hold on, look at the second round. I want to get excited because they always crush the first round and then lose the round of 16. And lo and behold, uh, they did it again. So unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, that wasn't my favorite. But hey, France looked amazing. Uh, Mbappe looked amazing, uh, Belgium looked great, England looked great, a lot of teams looked good, a lot of new teams, so it was good, man. You know, I'll tell you this, uh, the World Cup in 2014 was my favorite because the United States was actually doing good. Yeah. They, they won a couple of rounds and the goalie, I forgot his name, but the goalie was, was pretty great okay. in yeah. the team. And people were, uh, people were thinking, will this be the first World Cup the USA will go to the final round? People were people were questioning. It didn't happen, but yeah. if it did, yeah, I, would, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. For me, I would laugh so hard. I would yeah. laugh. Uh, yeah. I'm like, wow! I didn't expect that. Well, I know that the U.S., especially here you go, especially from uh, from Mexicans and Latinos, the U.S. soccer gets a lot of hate. Mm -hmm. But uh, the U.S. is they're doing great. Man. They've done so much better than like when I grew up. Uh, being a, a Mexican born in Canada, mm -hmm. uh, Canada is not progressing as fast as we'd like. Mexico is always kind of like the big fish in the small, the small pond. Uh, and the U.S. was similar to Canada. This is my daughter. You say hi. Say hi. Uh, okay, that is. Just say hi, okay? You go, you go play with your friends. No, I don't want that right now. Oh. Okay. 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 Okay, I'll take the <laughs> Okay? Good play. Okay? Sorry. So, um... No, hold on. <laughs> um, Canada and U.S. were this, almost the same when I was growing up. And it was basically a gimme when Mexico would play the U.S. And then sort of, uh... I think it was like U.S. and I... I'm, I'm like 40, so like U.S. 94. The U.S., they just start coming up and the U.S. is good, man. They're they get a lot of hate, and I'll probably get hate for saying it, but the U.S. is they're doing well, man, so oh. U.S. soccer is good. I mean, it's good stuff, so that's one much of the love, man. I love them. And that's one of the reasons why you guys need to come here, at least he said something that most people don't believe. Yes. You got, you know, I mean, when you got to give credit where credit's due, man. When somebody's doing well, I think you should give them the credit. All right. They're looking good, man, so. Well, I don't want to digress. Yeah. I want to go back. <laughs> yeah. I want to. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna leave this segment as the World Cup the World Cup segment. 
But going back to uh, your your business, your restaurant business, uh, may you please explain what were the challenges of creating your own restaurant business here in Taiwan? Because I went to another business res- business event called uh, the Red Room Live, mm, okay. and th- it was a group of entrepreneurs, foreign entrepreneurs. They they want to find a way to create their own business here. Uh, in Taiwan, without without being dependent on being an English teacher. Okay. And you said you also done some English teaching, but what were the what were the steps you had to take to create your own business here in the city? So, I think definitely do the research on, on what you want to be doing here. Uh, for me, I can only I can only speak for myself. I've uh, we've been doing it for about 11 years, and I think that. We started small. I mean, we didn't have a big budget to be like, "Hey, let's open in like Xinyi, right?" We opened uh, in Danshui Old Street, Danshui Laojie, and that was that was good. I mean, I was teaching. I was actually teaching English full time. I was coaching soccer part time. Uh, my schedule in the first year of our business was: uh, I teach kindergarten from eight to eight to eleven thirty. Uh, I'd come home, I'd make the dough, I'd marinate chicken, I'd do beans and rice, and then I'd go back and I would teach from about two to four. I'd come back to the house, get the food, get my wife, bring them all to the stand in Danshui. Mm-hmm. We set the stand up, and at about five thirty, okay, we would be selling food, and at five thirty, I'd leave. I'd coach soccer for two hours, and then I'd come back. Till about what seven seven thirty, I'd come back, mm-hmm. and then I would sell food until about eleven. So I did that for for my first year uh, doing this. So I really think that if you want to start something new, uh, give it a real chance. I mean, people give up uh, sometimes a little too soon, right. and I think give it a real chance. Uh, do the research. If anyone has any questions, they can ask me, man. I mean, I'm an open book. I got nothing to hide. I'm very happy to help people. So that's what I did. Uh, we did that for one year. We moved to a restaurant after after we found that, that the stand was going well. But uh, the, so for example, the rent in Den Shui Lao Jie, you get one ping. We were paying thirty-three thousand a month for that. Can you explain to the viewers uh, what's the ping or uh, what's the currency of that? Uh, I, people who I can never even remember, to be oh, honest. Okay. But uh, so it's like four, four. How many? Do you remember? A ping, a ping is how many square meters? Like so, it's uh, I would say two meters by two meters, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I don't know. Uh, so we had like one, basically one food stall area. We we're paying uh, thirty-three thousand NT a month, which is about eleven hundred bucks US. And uh, I mean, you can't live there. You got you, you. can't even cook there. You bring your food from home and you sell it there. So we did that for a year. The good thing is, uh, we got lots of people to try our food. Not everybody liked it. Uh, some people did. We thought, uh, let's move to a restaurant to a not so busy street, about a block away, a couple blocks away. Mm-hmm. But for a few thousand NT more, which is about a hundred bucks in uh, US more, mm-hmm. we could get first floor which was a restaurant the second floor which was an apartment and look at rooftop third floor so we get like the whole building for about 36,000 about 100 bucks more US a month so we moved over to there uh, wasn't not the best location but we thought let's 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 give it a shot because the schedule we had was a little rough, so but, uh, but you gotta really you gotta really give it a shot. I think. I think really, you succeeded. Really go for it, man. I yeah. think you succeeded. I think, man. I appreciate. It. You know, I think uh, people see see you know what's happened now, and, and they're like, wow, you're doing really well and successful. Yeah. And we have two restaurants, but there's a lot of times, man, when we went to. Uh, I mean, it's payday. We don't have any money to pay the staff. I we have to go to the bank. We borrow money from the bank. We'd have to pay off bank loans, you know, like a two-year high-interest bank loan just to pay the staff and the rent for that month when right. it was a slow month. So it's not it's not easy, but if you really if you really believe that you can do it, you can do it. I think. All right. Yeah. And yeah, we will be right back.